So far in this section, we have learned how to create a template driven form and how to read the value of a form control from a template driven form by using ng form object. Now in this lecture, let's learn how we can do form validation on a template driven form. So for this ng form object, you will notice that we also have a valid property. And this valid property simply tells whether a form is valid or not. Now, when will be a form valid? Well, let's say on each of these controls, we have added some validation. So for example, let's say this first name, last name and email is a required field. Now, if the user enters some value for these fields, okay, in that case, all these three controls have valid values now. And since only on these three controls, we have added validation, this form will be valid. Now, if any one of these form controls on which we have added validation, if it does not contain a valid value, in that case, that form control will be invalid as well as the complete form will also be invalid. So for example, if I don't specify an email here, in that case, for this first name, we have provided a valid value. For the last name also, we have provided a valid value. But for the email, we are not providing a valid value. In that case, this email control, it will be invalid. And since it is invalid, the complete form here is invalid. Okay, so on the form level, we have this valid property, which tells whether the form is valid or not. And we also have this invalid property. So if the form is valid, in that case, this invalid property will be false and valid property will be true. But if the form is invalid, in that case, this valid property will be false and invalid property will be true. Now, when a form will be invalid, only when one of its controls on which we have added validation does not contain a valid value. Now, if I go to this controls property there, we have each of these controls in the form as a property and they are of type form control. And on each of these form controls also, we have the valid and invalid property. So you can see we have this valid property on the form control and also the invalid property. So a form control will be valid if on that form control we have added a validation and in that form control we are providing a proper value. And the form control will be invalid if on that form control some kind of validation has been added and it does not contain a valid value. Let's try to understand this with an example. So what I want is I want to make this first name, last name and this email field as a required field. So whenever the form will be submitted, these three controls must have a value. So let's see how we can add this type of validation in a template driven form. Now, as we have learned earlier in a template driven form, we do everything in the HTML template. So here we have our form and in that form here we have the first name input element. Now I want to make this input element as a required field. So user must enter a value inside this first name form control. For that, we are going to use the HTML required attribute and this will simply make this input as a required field. In the same way, I also want to make this last name as a required field. So there also I'll use this required attribute and I'm also going to add this required attribute on this email field. So this email should also be required. Now let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page. Let me clear everything. And if I don't enter anything inside this first name, last name and email, and if I click on the submit button, let's expand this ng form object. Now you will notice here the valid is set to false because now this form is not valid. And why it is not valid? Because on this first name, last name and email, we have added a validator called required, which makes these three controls as a required field. And since we have not entered any value in these required fields, these three controls are invalid. They don't have a valid data, so they are invalid. And as we learned earlier, if any one control of a form is invalid, in that case, the complete form is invalid. That's why you can see this valid property of the form is false and its invalid property will be true because currently this form is invalid. In the same way, if we expand these controls there, if we expand this first name, there also you will see that the valid property is false because on this first name control, we have added a validator. We have make it a required field. And since we are not entering any value in this field, it does not contain a valid value. 
and that's why this control is invalid and hence this valid property is false and its invalid property will be true and same will be the case for last name so there also this valid property will be false and its invalid property will be true and in the same way on the email also we have added a validation and there also we are not entering any value so its valid property will be false and its invalid property will be true but let's say if i expand this city on this city field we have not added any validation right so even if we don't enter any value inside this city field it is going to have a valid value because on this we have not added any validation so any value which we enter here even if it is an empty string it is going to be a valid value so that's why if i expand this city control there you will see that the valid property is true now if i go ahead and if i enter some value in these fields so let's say first name is manoj last name is ja and let's enter some email let's say abc at gmail.com and now if i submit this form only on these three controls we have added a validator so each of these three controls contains a valid value right on the other form controls we have not added any validator so by default these controls will be valid so in this way all the form controls of this form has a valid value in that case this form will be valid so if i submit the form now and if i expand this ng form object now you will notice that valid is true and invalid is false in the same way if we check each of the controls also on which we have added validation so for example this first name control there also you will see that the valid property of that control is true and the invalid property is false same will be the case for last name as well there also the valid will be true and invalid will be false and same is the case with email so here also the valid property will be true and invalid property will be false but if i don't enter a value in any one of the controls where we have added a validation for example if i remove this value from here from the email field now we are only entering value in the first name required field and the last name required field but this email is also a required field but here we are not entering a value so in this case this email control will be invalid and since one of the controls of this form is invalid the complete form will be invalid so let me clear the console here let me click on the submit button and if i expand this ng form you will notice that the form is invalid so the valid property is false and invalid property is true but if i expand this controls there you will see that for the first name and last name since we have provided a value the valid property will be true and invalid property will be false but on the email since it is a required field but we are not providing any value its valid property will be false and its invalid property will be true so in this way we can know which form control has an invalid value or a valid value and in this way we will also come to know whether a form is a valid form or not and again a form will be considered as valid whenever all its control has a valid value all right now another thing which i want to show you here is let's say inside this email field i enter some value some random value okay so i am entering some random value in the email field but this is not a valid email right but since this field is a required field and in that required field we have entered some value if i click on this submit button you will see that the valid property of the form is true and if i also expand the controls and if i expand the email form control here there also the valid property is true why because on this form control we have added required validator and required validator will only check if in that field if in that control we have a value or not here we have some value in this field so that's why this form control is considered as valid form control but in this form control we are not entering a valid value so we also want to check whether the value entered in this email field is a valid email address or not if it is not a valid email address in that case this form control should be considered invalid for that we can use another html attribute for validation which is email so on this email field i am going to add another validator called 
email. Let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page. And now let's enter first name, last name, and some invalid email address. Okay. Now, when I submit the form, since inside this email field, we have not entered a valid email address. We have entered some value, but we have not entered a valid email address. In that case, this form control is not valid. So it will make complete form invalid. So now this form should be invalid. And that's why the valid property is false and the invalid property will be true. So you see invalid property is true. Let's also check it on the control level. So let's expand this email form control. There also you will see that the valid property is false and invalid property is true. That's because now on this email field, we have two validators, the required validator and the email validator. And both these validators should be satisfied. Then only this form control will be valid. So now if I go ahead and if I enter a valid email address, abc at gmail.com, so it is a valid email address. Now if I submit the form, now inside this email field, we have entered some value and we have entered a valid email address. So now this form control should be valid. Let's check it. So let's expand this controls property. There let's expand this email property. And now the valid property is true because now in this form control, we are entering some value and that value is a valid email address. So that's why now this email form control is valid. And since now all the form controls are valid in this form, on the form level also, if we check the valid property, it should be true. Now let's see a practical use case of this valid property of this form. So what we want is if the form is valid, that means if all the form controls in that form has a valid value, then only we want to enable this submit button and user should be able to submit the form. If the form is not valid, in that case, this submit button should be disabled. Let's see how we can achieve that. So let's go to VS code. And what we want is we want to disable this submit button when the form is invalid. So here I'm going to use this disabled attribute and we are going to do a property binding here. And to this, we are going to assign an expression which will return a Boolean value true or false. And here we want to use the valid property of ng form. Now, where do we have the ng form? If I scroll up, to this registration form template reference variable, we are assigning this ng form. So this registration form variable, it is going to store a reference to this ng form object. And using that reference, we can access the value property of ng form. So let me copy this and let's scroll down. And here to this disabled property, we are going to assign some TypeScript expression. So here I will say registration form dot valid because this registration form it is storing an object of ng form and in that object we have this valid property so we want to disable this submit button when the form is not valid so here i'll use not operator like this you can also use invalid property here so if i use invalid property here in that case we don't need to use this not operator but if you use valid property in that case, we will have to use this not operator because if the form is valid, we don't want to disable the form. We only want to disable the form when the form is invalid. So when the form will be valid, this valid will return true. Otherwise, it will return false. So that's why we are using this not operator on it. Let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page. And you will notice, and you will notice that now this submit button is disabled. Now, how I say that this submit button is disabled? Because if I click on this submit button, you will see that ng form object is not being logged. So this submit button, the click functionality is not working here because it is disabled right now. Only if we enter some valid value in the form. So only on these three controls, we have added a validator. So now these three controls has a valid value and other controls by default is valid. So now this submit button should be enabled. So now when I click on this submit button, now this ng form object is being logged. But if I remove this value from here, so now the form is invalid because one of the controls on which we have added the validation, it does not contain a valid value. So this form is invalid. 
and when the form is invalid this submit button is disabled so when i click on this submit button now you will not see ng form object logged but if i enter some valid value and when i click on the submit button this ng form has been logged here so the form can be submitted now all right now let's do one more thing let's inspect one of the controls from this form so let's go to this elements tab and there we have the html of this form let me go ahead and let me expand this app root let me expand this section and let me expand this form and in that form let me expand this div and in this div we have this first name input element and we also have this last name input element so let's examine this first name input element now on this first name input element if you see the name for this input element is first name okay so on this first name input element you will see some css classes added so here you see this class attribute here you will see on this first name there are some css classes added like ng dirty ng valid and ng touched so let me actually refresh the page okay and yeah so you will see that now since we have refreshed the page this first name it is not touched we have not focused inside this first name it is also not dirty because its value is not changed and it is currently invalid because we have not entered any value in this first name field so this first name field it is a required field but we have not entered any value inside this first name field so currently it is invalid and for that you will see that some css classes has been added so ng touched has been added because currently this control has not been touched ng pristine has been added because the value of this first name has not changed from its previous value and also ng invalid css class has been added because this field it is a required field but we have not entered any value inside this field now just notice what happens when i click inside this first name form control and when i click outside of it you will notice that ng untouched css class has been removed and ng touched css class has been added okay but ng pristine and ng invalid is still there now if i go ahead and if i enter something inside this text box let's say my name now you will notice that ng pristine has been removed and ng dirty has been added because now the value of this first name form control has changed from its previous value so that's why this form control is now dirty so ng pristine css class has been removed and ng dirty css class has been added in the same way now this first name form control contains a valid value it is not empty and that's why ng invalid css class has been removed and ng valid css class has been added and same is the case with other controls if i expand this last name input element here there also currently you will see that ng untouched ng pristine and ng invalid css classes has been added because this form control this last name form control it is not touched its value has not changed from its previous value and it does not contain a valid value this field is a required field so it should have some value but currently it does not have any value so it is invalid but as soon as i click inside this last name and when i click outside you will see that ng untouched will be removed so just notice okay ng untouched has been removed and ng touched has been added and if i add some value here you will notice that ng pristine and ng invalid has been removed and ng dirty and ng valid has been added so this is how angular knows whether the form control is touched or not whether the form control has a valid value or not and whether the form control is dirty or not and we can make use of these css classes to our advantage we can use it to do something with the form let's understand that in our next lecture